So congratulations if you made it that far. So you really developed some non-trivial code. So starting from a real robot, you modeled the motion and the measurement and derived all the derivative matrices that were necessary and then implemented the prediction and the correction step of a full-fledged Kalman filter. And so whenever you have to do this for another robot or another system in general, you just may follow exactly the same steps. You set up the model for your system transition, you set up the model for the measurement, and then you derive all the Jacobian matrices, which are then required for the prediction and the measurement step of the Kalman filter. And so in practice, after you have set everything up, the problem is usually to find good values for the various covariance matrices in the filter. Now, when you run your code, it will produce this common prediction and correction text file. And when you load that, you will notice several interesting things. So, for example, in the beginning, our robot sits here and it doesn't move for the first few steps, but it sees those six landmarks. So, as it doesn't move, the system noise is zero. And so, in the beginning, it will accumulate all the measurements once again, which will then result in a smaller error ellipse. And as we move on, you can see we have more or less landmarks until we have only two here or even none at this position. So you can see at this position, our uncertainty in heading and position is relatively large. This gets smaller as we have more landmarks in our view. And as you see, we end up with a pretty smooth and globally correct trajectory. Now let's do the following modification to our code. In the Kalman filter loop, I put in this line, which means that for a certain position, where I may get zero, one, or more observations, I'll just keep the first observation in the list. And after we run this, we reload the trajectory, and now we obtain the following. The trajectory looks more jagged, and as we move on, we see we always take just one observation, if we have at least one. And this results in our error ellipse being larger than in the previous case. But nevertheless, our trajectory looks astonishingly good and certainly better than what we've achieved in unit B using our trajectory correction based on an estimation of the similarity transform. Now, if we take the last observation instead of the first, we will obtain this result, which doesn't look as good anymore. So especially in the beginning, we have this movement, either due to the fact that this landmark is relatively far away and our scanner has maybe some systematic error, or due to the fact that this landmark reference position is actually not correct. So globally we are not doing as good as in the previous case. And also notice, for example here, as we move along, how the measurement to this landmark influences how my ellipse is oriented. So once again, this is our final solution and congratulations if you made it successfully through this unit of our SLAM lecture. So see you in the next unit.